Hello everyone, this is Sarisha and I host the Women, Career and Life podcast. Just like you, I've traversed varied paths, stumbled a little, picked myself up and learned a great deal on my journey. Many of us face similar questions, but we don't always get to have a conversation with our friends or peers. In this podcast, you will hear real stories that you can connect with on the challenges of navigating career and life. You must be wondering who I am. In my everyday life, I'm a career woman, a mom, and an avid reader. I'm also a road tripper, amateur gardener, and even a fashionista on some days. Join me and my guests as we have an open and honest discussion on career change, trade-offs, and working across boundaries. You get the idea. It's a perspective you simply may not hear anywhere else. This is Sarisha, and I have a guest host today, Usha, who is going to join me on our guest interviews. We have Nirisha, Garimala, and Tian Lee joining us, and they have had an amazing symbiotic relationship as mentor and mentee. And we'll get to hear how they establish this relationship and how they keep connected as they go through their various stages in life. I'm excited because of many reasons. Well, one big reason is that Nirisha makes the most wonderful pizzas, and I know Tian uh, is lovely at karaoke. But other than that, as Siri and I spoke with them, we heard these nuggets of why they liked the experience, but they were not able to pinpoint and say, this is the reason we clicked. And those kind of relationships at work are rare. And I'm excited to hear about what made them click. So with that context, I want to welcome you. Thank you, Nirisha, for joining us. And thank you, Tian, for joining us and sharing your story on our podcast. Siri, why don't you get started? Welcome, Nirisha and Tian. We are really excited to have you. Tian, we're going to start with you first. We know you were in a mentee relationship not too long ago, but before that, can you give us some idea of where you're from, what did you do before, and what do you do at work, and what do you really enjoy about it? I'm Tian Li. I'm from Vietnam. Currently, I'm an electrical engineer. I love the job I'm doing because I love the rewarding feeling when I successfully solve some problem. That's excellent. I think problem solving, that's what kind of gets our zing going for most of us, though we may be doing different jobs. And you and Nirisha met through a mentorship program. So what made you really sign up for this mentorship program? And what did you learn from it? So I grew up in Vietnam and I came to the U.S. when I was 18 years old for education. So I barely know anything about the U.S., especially educational system. So that was my second year of college. And I remember this day very vividly. I just walked out of a classroom and it was the main hall of the college. So there were so many students walking toward different direction. And I felt like in in that sea of people, I felt like I was just floating with the crowd, not knowing what I'm doing in life. Like, you know, I was in college. I didn't have a job. I didn't even have a plan. I I didn't know anything like, when am I going to transfer to university? What am I going to do next? So I learned this lesson a long time ago that it is okay to ask questions. And I don't know all. So I start going around asking many people, family, teacher, classmate, advisors about what what do I do? Like, what, what should I do? And somehow I couldn't get all my questions question answered from them. That's when I saw the poster of the mentorship program. And of course, of course, I have to sign up because I have to find out what what to do next. And that's where I met Narisha. That is such an interesting story. I really liked the expression where you said you were floating on a sea and being carried away and to find that anchor point and reaching out to people and finding that mentorship program. So how long was your mentorship with Narisha? And what do you think worked really well? For you and what some of the best tips she gave you? I think officially the mentorship was two semester, but honestly, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a lifetime because she, she's still a mentor to me, even though it's been years ago. So for me, mentorship is not just about guidance. It's not just about the mentor giving some, the mentee some advice, because if that can be, people can go to Google and look it up, whatever question that they have. But mentorship is more for me with Marisha is that she cares about my success. She wanted me to be successful. And we just genuinely adore each other and genuinely care about each other. And I think what, what makes it even better is that I, I, I look up to her and I do respect her. 
So whatever she advised me, I really value it. And I always come to our meeting with a list of questions. Of course, I had a lot of questions back then, and I, I always have a list of questions, and she always patiently listened to what I asked and tried to help me out. And she go above and beyond to help me. So at that time, I wanted to transfer to university. I wanted to apply for scholarship. And Narisha been there. She done that. So she gave me great advice. I cannot choose one, which one's the best because all of them are. And even later on, when I, I start my career as an engineer and she worked at that field, so she even go up of her way, finding someone else who also an engineer to help me out with. I'm really grateful for her for doing that. I think it's amazing that you guys have such a warm relationship. As you said, it's not about just really being a mentor. It's really being friends and being family, that extended <laughs> family that you can reach out to. So I can understand it's not like one single tip or anything. It's, it's a genuine caring that you were talking about. And I have a theory based on our conversation before we started the podcast, there's one thing that both of them love. They love being around people. And I think that really did it. I mean, the way in, in, in that sea of people, Narisha stood out for TN, but I just think that fact that both of you love being around people may be clicked, but that's just my theory, right? We'll find out in the end. So Narisha, why don't we get started with um, your background, your story? How did you reach where you are now? And what is it that you love about your career? I'm Nirisha and I grew up in India and came to the States, gosh, uh, many years back, let's just put it that way, for graduate school. Currently, I work in a learning technology company and I work in client relations. It's funny you talk about me me and Tian really enjoy working with people or being around people. That's truly one of the best things of my job is getting to work with clients and really helping them problem solve with what's going on. But also additionally, the other thing that I really, really, what gets me up and getting to work is the relationship I have with my own team. It's lots of trust and lots of collaboration that happens on a regular basis. So those are the things. So that's a little bit about me and what really keeps me going at work. Some of those things just naturally lend themselves into a mentorship type of role. But More than that, was there something else that drew you into being a mentor? I'm curious if you've had experiences in your life where somebody Mm -hmm. has mentored you or you just naturally looked up to people. Just thinking back, right, why I signed up. So in a couple of different higher education institutions I've been, I have uh, had signed up to be a mentor. I think maybe one time during graduate school, it was a very specific career-driven mentorship program. But I think it was really, I think, throughout my life, but also throughout my educational experiences, having, finding somebody to, like Tian mentioned, asking questions. One thing that my dad always stressed upon us was, uh, me and my sister was, it's always good to ask questions. And in fact, when you ask questions, actually it shows understanding rather than the lack of it. That kind of always stuck with me. So knowing to ask questions and asking for help has kind of was the way we were brought up. But I knew I would not have been, I wouldn't have reached where I am today without the help of different key people along my life. So when I had, when there were these formal opportunities at the institutions I worked to actually be a mentor, I went ahead and signed up for it. Because I know uh, sometimes you never know what role you can play in people's life. So I decided it was kind of my opportunity to give back. I know you a little bit outside of the podcast as well, Nirisha, and you come from a family of academics. So it's only fitting that you would talk about asking because I've heard this phrase, there are no wrong questions, they're just wrong answers. So that's that's just a perfect fit of your background and where you come from. Now, uh, in terms of your experience with TN, what Mm -hmm. did you think went well? Now, TN talked about a lot of things, but in your perspective, what do you think went well? So I mentioned to you that this was not my first round at mentorship, right? I had done it at another institution and this was the second institution I was in. But really what set this particular one apart right from the very first meeting that Tian and I had was the fact that she came into the room with a vision for what kind of help she wanted. Because most of these mentor relationships, mentor programs, they have here is a booklet 
here, if, uh, here are some things that you can do with your mentor, get to know them, ask them about their exams, ask them about their classes. I don't think me and Tian, I think besides signing the form that was a requirement, I don't think we followed that booklet because it was such an organic one. And it really was because she came in with a vision and she wanted to see how do I go to the next step? She knew that where we met was just a stepping stone to the, her educational degree. She wanted help as to how to get there. And I was very upfront with her. This was something, yes, I had been in graduate school, but I had never been in undergraduate school in the US. So it was a new thing that we were learning together. And it really, so that's where it was her clear goal and her genuineness at, uh, I know we were talking about genuineness about relationship, but I think for me, what stood out was her genuineness about I have a goal. I want to succeed. This is something that is important to me. And that really resonated with me because she was willing to put in the work. She was willing to put in whatever needed to be done because we would walk away saying, okay, go ahead and look at these, go research these. And so that we can build on what we have learned together. Let's both learn this uh, information together. So it was really her walking in with uh, a goal really set this particular relationship apart for me. And that was the start. Nirisha, did you find yourself preparing for these discussions because she had a clear goal? You felt you had to prepare and then put in the effort and then take her to the next level? Absolutely. I mean, I felt I was completely invested. I was invested in getting her whatever I could get for her. Because I knew at the end of the day, it was what she was going to bring into the, uh, for her to succeed. But I was invested. That's, that's the best way I can put it. I was invested in her own success and getting to, and talking about options. Because I know, again, coming, as you mentioned, coming from a family of academia, I uh, had an insight as to, okay, if you go into this program, this is how far you need to go. So for instance, by the engineering, I remember uh, Tian, you and I were exploring uh, different options, right? Biology, micro, I think it was the biochemistry, in engineering. So all these different things. She knew she wanted to stay with science. So to come back to your question, Usha, absolutely. I was going and preparing myself. I was meeting, I was working on around along with the students. So I would go ask them, hey, can you tell me more? This is what I'm trying to get answers to, or where can I go find these answers? So I was learning alongside with her and we were sharing and learning from each other. I think it's very interesting that especially your relationship, because as Usha started, it was such a symbiotic, a very trusting, genuine, you've, you've built a relationship for a lifetime beyond just that mm -hmm. mentorship program that was set up for the two semesters. Tian came with clear goals, but those goals would have still been a certain very high level, hey, this is what I want out of it. But you both working and discussing and learning. You are not from her field. Your field doesn't necessarily overlap with her. You have some experiences. If you look at the broad spectrum, your experience is that you travel from another country to the U.S. to study. That is where you join. But mm -hmm. as such, it's not at the undergrad. It's not in the same technology field or anything like that. So there was things that you had to do that she had to do mm -hmm. for you to meet and continue to invest in it. That, that you both put in a lot of work to build that, going and getting that information, everything. Absolutely. You are right that it was, but I, I can tell you from my side, it didn't seem like work. These were, these were definitely mentor meetings that I would look forward to. Let's and, just say the, the, this set, because the other ones, the other ones that I had done previously were like, oh yes, I'm meeting with the mentor. Let me bring out my booklet. What are we going to talk about today? It was, you know, check marks. This one was, oh wait, I, I can't wait to share this with Tien. And so let's see where this goes. So definitely set itself apart. It was investment of a different sort it was more emotional and it was more the joy of meeting it's that you don't want to have to reschedule this meeting and mm -hmm. there's no reason to have to that you you're looking forward to it and we all have some of those mentors and some of those relationship meetings we look forward to mm -hmm. Usha and I will talk about this in in one of the upcoming episodes we call them our personal board of directors who is on it who's going to help you grow. And that's what you both have going here. So maybe you should really call it that rather than just a mentor and a mentee relationship. We always ask our guests, if you were to write a letter to your 18 year old self, it's usually 21 year old, but you're not too far from there. So we're going to say, if you were to write a letter to your 18 year old self on one quality that would help you get through those years of college and to be where you are today, what would that be? 
like Narisha, I think that I couldn't be here today just because of me. So there's many people that help me along the way, just like Narisha. So the, the quality that I would tell myself over and over again is ask questions. Because I, I believe that everyone has something that you can learn from. So that would be great if you are not afraid to ask questions. And also, besides asking questions, have the ability to do critical thinking. Because you cannot, because I'm the type of person, if I have one question, I'm going to ask a bunch of people and then get different as Then at the end of the day, I would sit down and see, okay, which advice fit me the most? Which advice would match my situation, my personality? You, you cannot just blindly apply some advice like from someone else to you because, you know, everyone's different. So never afraid to ask questions and critical thinking. I think those two what still, still today is still going to get me far away. That's great advice for people at any stage of their career, not just at your stage. And Nirisha, we're going to ask you the same question, but we're going to go with a note that you would write to your 21 year old self. You're not too far from there too, but we'll go with 21. I thought about this uh, when you asked me, I'll have to say one thing. I'm a very different person. I am now. I'm a little farther away from 21 than Tian is. So when I look in the rearview mirror, one of the things is, I think I would have told my 21 year old self to have the courage to kind of stand up and speak up for myself. And it's okay to make mistakes. Tell her to continue and be very confident about doing is asking for help and asking questions. Be sure of yourself and stand up for yourself. It's great how both of you have the same point to make, but you also show how it is okay to take some time to get there. You don't necessarily have to get there. Tian probably got there earlier and then you took your time to get there and both of them are okay. Thank you so much. And Sirisha, do you want to take over and tie it all together? This was such a joy able to being able to stand up and believe in yourself. Those are all key points that I took away. And even to your point, Nirisha, when you're thinking of it's a journey as you evolve and you're not the same person when you were at your 21 year old self and there are things we can do differently. So if I was looking at a mentor, a mentee, a personal board of directors, let's just start calling it that even, is can you ask questions, talk to people and like you said, put the critical lens on and see what the right decision for you is at that point in time because it may be different later on and pull all those pieces together but just reach out I think in the end it's all about reaching out and gathering that and being okay with it so I want to say thanks to both of you it was a lot of fun thank you from my side as well Tian and Nirisha Thank you. This was a pleasure connecting with Tian again on just talking about our relationship and just seeing it from all these different perspectives and really appreciate your insight, both uh, Usha and Sarisha too. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Tune in every other Wednesday to catch the next episode. If you think a friend may benefit from this, please share this podcast with them. All the resources we talked about are also available on my website, womencareerandlife.com. Like, subscribe, and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. I would love to hear from you about your stories and your journey. You can reach me on my blog, Twitter, Instagram, or Gmail at Women, Career, and Life. Until next time, this is Sarisha signing off. Remember, there are infinite possibilities to drive change in career and life, which will you choose to make a reality today?